When most people make oatmeal cookies, they just use the recipe on the back of the canister. That's right, because if anyone should know how to make a great oatmeal cookie, it's the folks who make the oats. But that iconic recipe has some issues. The cookies have a very cakey texture and almost no oatmeal flavor to speak of. Mm -hmm. So we decided to give this recipe a well-needed makeover. We wanted a chewy cookie with serious oat flavor, and it starts with using the right oats. So here we have old-fashioned rolled oats, and that's the classic oat you use in an oat cookie. However, we've seen some recipes that use quick and instant oats, but this is a no-no. These oats have been par-cooked and then re-dried, and they have almost no flavor, and their texture is really sticky, almost like wallpaper paste. Okay. So these are out, and honestly, you don't want to use steel-cut oats. This is not for cookies. This is for a bowl of porridge in the morning. A big, thick, strapping bowl of <laughs> porridge in the morning. You'd know about that, wouldn't <laughs> yes, you? Yes, I would. <laughs> so here we have three cups of old-fashioned rolled oats, and that's the same as you'll see on the back of the canister, so no changes yet. All right, now let's look at the dry ingredients. Here we have one cup of all-purpose flour. That's a slight change. The recipe on the canister has a little more flour, but by reducing the flour and leaving the oat amount the same, you're going to get more oat flavor. To this, we're going to add a little salt. This is three-quarters of a teaspoon of salt and a little baking soda. That's the leavener. This is half a teaspoon of baking soda, and that's also a little bit less. It's going to make those cookies a little less cakey. Okay. We don't want puffy cookies. No, you know, that back of the canister box, it made a really cakey cookie on the inside with crisp edges. But as soon as that cookie cooled, it sort of had a uniform texture that was just stale. Okay. We want crisp edges, chewy center. Gotcha. And another way that we get a nice chewy center with crisp edges is looking at the type of fat. Now, that well-known recipe uses 20 tablespoons of butter, which adds a lot of flavor, almost too much, covering up that oat flavor, but also it makes the cookie too cakey. So we reduced it down to just four tablespoons of butter and half a cup of vegetable oil. Now, what this is doing is this is inverting the ratio of saturated fat to unsaturated fat, which again leads to a chewier center, and that's what we're after. So when you use a liquid oil like this, you're talking about a bowl cookie, so no standing mixer needed. But in order to get this butter in there, we're going to have to melt it. So this is four tablespoons of unsalted butter over medium-high heat. While we're melting it, we might as well brown it because that really helps the oat flavor shine through. And we're going to cook this for a minute or two after it starts to melt until you get that nice golden color. Now, I imagine since we're stirring everything together, we're not using an electric mixer. That also helps prevent a cakey cookie because we're not beating any air into it. That's right. So I love this. It's simpler and better. Mm -hmm. So this is not a time when you want to walk away because that butter could go from brown to burned like that. I also like to swirl the pan. It gives me something to do, <laughs> but it also helps brown the butter a bit more evenly. Oh, there she goes. Mm. Oh, that smells so good. Yeah, we're going to go right into a bowl. All right, so into the hot butter, we're going to add our spices. And our spices is just this lowly bit of cinnamon, just a quarter teaspoon. And this is a marked difference from that recipe we've been talking about that had nutmeg and a ton of cinnamon. We found it really just tastes like a spice cookie, not like an oatmeal cookie. So just a little bit of cinnamon does the job. A by, soupçon. Yeah. <laughs> and by adding it to the butter, you're really blooming its flavor. All right, to this, we're going to add our oil. And this, again, this is half a cup of vegetable oil. We're going to add our sugars. Now, two types of sugars, brown sugar and white sugar. That combo adds good flavor and crisp edges. So this is 3 quarters of a cup of brown sugar, half a cup of white sugar. Let's stir this together. I love bowl cookies. They're just so easy to make. I don't even bake them. I just, uh, <laughs> you just eat the dough. Mix the dough. <laughs> I've been known to do that. That's why you mix it in a bowl. <laughs> Serves one. <laughs> All right, now we're going to add the eggs. Now, the original recipe had one egg, but we added an extra yolk that adds richness without being greasy. So one egg and one yolk. Last but not least, a little bit of vanilla. This is a teaspoon between the brown sugar, the brown butter, and that little bit of vanilla. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. All right, now we're going to add our flour mixture. Now, this dough is going to get very thick, and that's good because I think a lot of oatmeal doughs, they add too much liquid thinking that the oats need that, but mm -hmm. that makes a cakey texture. You want a stiff dough so it stays nice and crisp. All right, last but not least are three cups of old-fashioned oats. And the most controversial ingredient in this whole cookie, the raisins. This is uh, half a <laughs> cup of raisins. You're not a fan of the raisins. I am actually a fan of the raisins, but just half a cup is all we're going to add. They're optional. I'm opting them in here. I'm right. sorry. That's all right. I'm going to make you like them. <laughs> I have no choice. You don't have any choice. So you can see how thick this dough is. All right. So I'm going to switch over to a spatula and really just make sure everything's all incorporated here. 
Now, it probably would have been easier to stir if you hadn't added the raisins. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we're pretty well incorporated. So I have some baking sheets set up over there, if you wouldn't mind. Thank you, and they're lined, of course, with parchment paper. Now we're just gonna portion these cookies out, and you want about three tablespoons of dough per cookie. I'm gonna use a handy dandy scoop that measures pretty much three tablespoons of dough. Those are so great to have on hand. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna portion them all out, and then if there's any dough left over, I'll go back and add little bits to whatever cookies look like they need it. Dough left over. <laughs> <laughs> Here's our last cookie there. All right, now before we put these in the oven, we want to flatten the cookies a little bit because this dough is so thick, those cookies won't spread right on their own. So we're gonna give them a head start. And the key to doing that is wet hands because this dough is very sticky. So with wet hands, I'm just gonna press each cookie till it's about two and a half inches in diameter. I like to do one and then measure it. See if on the nose. So that's your template. That's my template. All right, so that tray looks perfect. And as usual, we're gonna bake these one tray at a time. That way they bake evenly all the way through. We're gonna bake them at 375 degrees for about 10 minutes a tray until they're set around the edges, but still nice and chewy in the middle. Ooh. Oh, smell that. I do, I do, I do. Mm -hmm. Now, knowing when these cookies are done baking can be a little tricky because they don't get a ton of color. You can see they're just starting to get golden around the edges in place, but the center looks underdone, and that's perfect. That's how you get a chewy center. And also, if you kind of touch it on the side, you can see that edges are just starting to set. So that's perfection. Okay. So we're gonna let these cookies sit on this hot tray for about five minutes. They're gonna continue to bake through a little bit and set up. Then we're gonna transfer them to a wire rack and let them cool completely. All right. In the meantime, I'm gonna throw the second batch in the oven. All right, so here are our two batches of cookies and they're ready to eat. Yes, no more waiting. Mm. Oh, look at that. Nice and chewy in the mm. center. Very crisp around the edges. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It really does have a, almost a toffee-like taste, but I can get those oats in there. Mm -hmm. It tastes like toasted oats. That's right. They have a really complex flavor, thanks to that brown butter. Mm -hmm. And that little bit of cinnamon, you don't, is not overpowering. Most of the time when I eat oatmeal cookies, it's like a spice cookie with a little bit of oats in it. Mm -hmm. You definitely switch the equation. It's oats first, cinnamon takes a backseat. Finally, an oatmeal cookie recipe that lets the oatmeal shine. To make these at home, start by using a combination of vegetable oil and butter and brown that butter to deepen its flavor. Reduce the spices down to just a smidge of cinnamon and use both granulated sugar and brown sugar for a toffee-like taste. Mix the cookie dough by hand, stirring in old-fashioned oats and raisins just before baking. And there you have it, from our test kitchen to your kitchen. The most excellent, the most Odi oatmeal cookies. Oatmeal McOatface, is that what you call Odie them? Odi McOatface. <laughs> Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.